We are the paradoxical ape. Bipedal, naked, large-brained. Long the master of fire, tools, and language, but still trying to understand ourselves. Aware that death is inevitable, yet filled with optimism. We grow up slowly. We hand down knowledge. We empathize and deceive. We shape the future from our shared understanding of the past. Carta brings together experts from diverse disciplines to exchange insights on who we are and how we got here. An exploration made possible by the generosity of humans like you. Greetings. Today I will talk about ABO blood groups and we will explore to which extent this system is unique to humans. Blood groups were discovered 120 years ago by a doctor in Vienna who observed curious patterns when he was mixing serum, the fluid from coagulated blood, with red blood cells of certain individuals. You can see here an example of bloods that don't react and serum and blood cells that react in a reaction called agglutination, where antibodies in the serum are coagulating the red blood cells of another individual. He observed by mixing blood pairwise from six mothers that had just given birth, six healthy women, postpartum women, that bloods of different pairs reacted in particular ways. He verified that by also doing the same thing with six with blood and blood cells from six healthy men and discovered that there were patterns of reaction between the antibodies in the sera of certain individuals and the red blood cells of others. And so he described three blood groups, which he, na he named A, B, and O. And these differed by presence and absence of certain antibodies and certain antigens, molecules on the surface of red blood cells. It took him several more years to describe a fourth, much rarer blood group called AB blood group, where there was no antibodies present, but both types of antigens were present on the red blood cells. Now, for most of the 20th century, it was observed that unlike humans, where four blood types exist, four ABO blood types, A, B, AB, and O, our closest living relatives, the African great apes, had only A and O types in common chimpanzees, only A type in bonobos, and only B type in gorillas. Of course, in the case of humans, in the context of tra uh, transfusion medicine and transplantations, these ABO blood groups have become extremely important clinically because uh, it is a matter of life and death not to infuse a patient with mismatched blood groups. Now, what are blood groups? Blood groups are defined as inherited differences in biochemical composition of blood and other tissues, it turns out. So what I have here is a cartoon of a red blood cell, an erythrocyte. And on this red blood cell, it's not to scale, you can find a variety of proteins, lipids, glycoproteins, glycolipids. And these, it turns out, can differ between individuals based on their genetics. And blood groups often also include the presence of antibodies against molecules that are not present on our own blood cells. So the topic of today is the ABO blood group, which it turns out is only one out of 40 different blood groups involving over 400 different molecules. As I mentioned, it was the first one to be discovered over 120 years ago, and it involves natural antibodies that appear in early life after the baby's exposure to gut microbes, and it's clinically most relevant. Many of you are familiar with the plus minus that often is written after A, B, or O, plus minus. 
That refers to rhesus, which is a protein on the surface of red blood cells, and I shall not discuss that today. So today's topic is ABO, which is defined as little sugar chains on the surface of red blood cells. They can sit on glycoproteins or on glycolipids. Now let's look at a red blood cells to scale. We make ourselves very small and zoom in on the surface of one of our red blood cells. And what we could observe, if we could make ourselves this small, is that the red blood surface, the red blood cell surface, is covered with a complicated array of molecules that are short sugar chains or oligosaccharides, also known as glycans. And ABO antigens turn out to be short sugar chains. They are present at a number of about 2 million per red blood cell. Uh, to give you an idea, there are other sugars that are even more common on red blood cells, for example, sialic acids, that are present at 10 times that number, 20 million per red blood cell. So the ABO system was discovered in 1900s, 1900, uh, 1901, but it took over 60 years for biochemists to actually zoom in on the, on the biochemical nature of these antigens, and another 30 years to discover the genetic basis that determines whether you are A, B, O, or AB in your blood type. Now, it turns out that the genetic basis is remarkably simple. It is a single gene that is located on chromosome 9. The gene does not encode for sugars. Like genes, it is a protein coding gene that encodes for an enzyme, a protein called a transferase. It's a glycosyl transferase that can transfer monosaccharide sugars to little growing chains of sugars. Now, based on the DNA sequence, we each have at this gene you can produce a little oligosaccharide that ends in one type of sugar or another type of sugar, a galactose, instead of an N-acetyl galactosamine. Or your enzyme might have mutations that render it inactive, a loss of function, in which case you do not add a sugar, and that would be blood type O. The antigen of blood type O is called H antigen. So the loss of function, whether you make no protein or you make an inactive protein, turns you into blood type O. Now, it turns out that it was only less than 10 years ago that a group in Chicago, Molly Trevorsky and colleagues, uh, looked at a, a phylogenetic comparison of these ABO genes across primates. And lo and behold, what they found is that it seems that this system of diversity between individuals within one species that we call ABO polymorphism is really old. It's as old as primates, more than 20 million years old. And it's somewhat curious that the African apes seem to lack the full system. But many of the other non-human primates, you can see, have all alleles, and they can make the different blood groups. So based on this wider phylogenetic comparison, it's really clear that the ABO system is, in fact, not uniquely human. It's a, it's a widespread system of maintaining diversity within populations. If we look at humans and the, the distribution of the different alleles across different populations, we can see that in many populations around the world, you find all three alleles. There are some interesting places, such as in, in uh, native population of South America, where almost everyone uh, has the O alley. But in modern countries around the world, you find all four blood types. So this is allele frequencies over here, and this is phenotype frequencies, the actual blood type. And you can see that most countries have people with all four blood types. And of course, that's very relevant for clinical uh, use. Uh, we need different blood types in blood banks so we can save people's lives when we transfuse uh, blood. Now, this system is a, is a co-dominant um, system of inheritance where you can have two different alleles, which allows you to be AB or A, even if you carry an O alley. Now, one question is, what, what forces, what evolutionary forces maintain this? Did this evolve to complicate blood transfusions? Very unlikely. Uh, it turns out that pathogens and parasites don't seem to be able to infect people of different blood groups with the same efficiency. ABO blood types are known to affect the susceptibility uh, in, in many different pathogens and, and parasites. Take viruses, for example, uh, different strains of viruses 
will specifically infect only people of one or another blood type. Among bacteria, depending on the bacteria, whether it's the cholera bacteria or helicobacter that can cause ulcers or campylobacter or group A or group B streptococci or staphylococcus, different species of bacteria have a preference for certain blood groups and it goes in all possible directions. So these pathogens and, and parasites have selected our ancestors in different directions. The same is true for protozoa, such as the really important uh, causative agent of, of a malignant malaria, uh, Plasmodium falciparum, that prefers A and B individuals over O individuals. It's also true for fungi and even for helminths, such as schistosomes, where there are different preferences of one blood group over the other. An additional complication, you might have heard people use the word histo blood group, not just blood group, has to do with the fact that it is now understood that this molecular diversity, this biochemical identity that we, we differ uh, in between individuals, can also be present in other tissues than the blood. About 80% of us make ABO antigens, these short oligosaccharides that sit on glycolipids and glycoproteins. We also make those in our bodily secretions, in our lungs, in our gastrointestinal tract, and in our reproductive tract. 20% don't make them. These people are called non-secretors, and this is based on a different gene, the gene that attaches this fucose sugar to this chain. If this gene is inactive, then you do not produce these secretions on your, in your saliva and other bodily secretions. So human individuals also differ with respect to whether they maintain this polymorphism just within their vasculature or whether they also present it in their lungs and so forth, which are important landing places for infectious agents. ABO is not expressed in connective tissues, muscle or central nerval tissue, nervous tissue. Many years ago, Ajit Varki and I uh, wrote about the evolution of glycan diversity. And one of the questions we, we entertained is that glycans seem to be specifically involved in maintaining diversity. Immunologists have long talked about God, G-O-D, as generation of diversity, with the idea in mind that diversity can be protected. So what you see here is just an attempt by Ajit and me to propose a very simple model where we have individuals of just two types, simpler than ABO. One type is susceptible to this little pathogen here that likes corners, but doesn't like round things. And if you have a mixed population that differs in composition, individuals of two kinds, then what can happen is that the non-susceptible individuals that differ actually produce a type of herd immunity and they protect other susceptible individuals against uh, population-wide infection. So this is this idea of protection, protective diversity, and it seems that ABO is involved in that. And it's not just recognition. Uh, a lot of pathogens use the very sugar chains that define ABO to attach to the host and inf infect. It turns out most viruses, including the current SARS-CoV-2 that causes the current epidemic, pandemic, are enveloped viruses. Enveloped viruses that come out of one individual, say they come out of Pascal, my blood type is A, will carry little sugar chains that look, that are the A antigen on their surfaces. So I would invite you to think of, of infection by enveloped viruses as a type of nanotransplantation. And it turns out during initial infection, when a virus coming out of an A type individual tries to infect the O type individual, the O-type individual has a huge advantage because she or he is making both antibodies against A and B. And so if an envelope viruses with A or B determines on its envelope arrives, it is tagged for destruction by the existing antibodies of the O individual. This effect, of course, only takes place at the beginning of an, epi of an epidemic. As soon as we have enough of each blood type infected, the viruses will find a, a host that is more compatible. So there's actually quite a lot of evidence for this from both experiments and epidemiology for viruses such as measles, influenza A, uh, HIV, and SARS-CoV-2. Now, humans, of course, are cultural 
uh, our cultural species, we have technology, we have medical technology, and blood transfusions are incredibly important globally. Uh, based on WHO data, there are over 180 million blood donations a year. That corresponds to about 20 Olympic swimming pools of blood that are being given and then transfused into people. And it turns out it is still not enough to cover the demand. Just like the current vaccine rollout, you can see from this map that many places actually are underserved in terms of badly needed uh, blood banks. Now, in, in, uh, in the early 20th century, people like Arthur Morand, who was a hematologist in England, went around the world and collected blood samples from so-called Aboriginal populations that were quite ill-defined, and the collections were far from ethical by today's standards. But they generated some very interesting data showing that across the world, human populations differ in the relative frequency of certain alleles. Very strikingly, South, South America, for example, is almost completely fixed for the blood, uh, blood type O allele. We still don't know the, what the reason for this is. It could have to do with founder events and demographics, but it could also have to do with recent selection. Unfortunately, as with many other uh, enterprises in anthropology, uh, back then, several 20th century European anthropologists decided, well, look at A group seems to be very, very um, common in Europe. Uh, they immediately jumped to conclusion that a, the A blood group must be superior uh, without absolutely no evidence. But that just highlights the danger of studying ourselves and then being biased to finding something that makes us look better than our neighbor. So this was for a long time, people were very focused on proving that A group was better than B or, o or AB. And unfortunately, this persists. There is plenty of evidence of surviving pseudoscience with regard to ABO. Some of you might have heard about the ABO diets, which are based on patently wrong theories and actually have been debunked several times and warned against by the British Dietetic As Association. Similarly, there is a type of ABO astrology quite uh, popular in Japan that is known as Ketsu Ketsueki Gata or blood type and personality, even predicting how you will study for your college exams based on your ABO blood type. And it's used traditionally for matchmaking uh, in, with belief in inconsistencies, incompatibilities between different ABO blood groups. So in summary, the ABO histo blood groups are not human specific because they, they have persisted for millions of years as something that is known as a balanced polymorphism. Whenever one blood group becomes rare, another one has an advantage. It becomes more common until most pathogens target that one, it becomes rare again. And of course, since the development of modern medicine based on human culture and technology, ABO histo blood groups have become very important clinically for the many millions of blood transfusions and hundreds of thousands of organ transplantations a year. So what this highlights really is that this is an example where the ABO blood groups are a non-topic for, for comparative anthropogeny. We only realize that once we, we look at a wider comparison, including other non-human primates, initially based on just comparisons of humans and African great apes, it looked like it was a, a uniquely human feature but it is not. And this highlights the importance of wider phylogenetic comparisons when we ask ourselves questions about distinctly human phenotypes. I thank you very much.